Okay, so let's talk about a few more decimal uh, number systems and we'll start with octal and hexadecimal. Alright, so remember humans understand decimals, computers understand binary, but computers have 32, 64, and even 128 bit buses. So putting numbers in binary is kind of cumbersome. 32 bit data looks like this. You see that there are of the groups of four, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so eight times four, 32 bits, right? A bit is a single digit, binary digit, remember. Hexadecimal, which is base 16, and octal, base eight numbers, um, let us represent binary data in a more compact form. So we're gonna go through how you do the conversions, all right? So when we want to go from decimal to binary, uh, we either use successive division or weighted multiplication. And we'll use the same procedure to move between decimal and octal and hexadecimal and decimal. It's just the numbers we multiply and divide, divide by are different, all right? So this is give you an overview of what um, the numbers look like from 0 to 19 in all four number systems, all right? You'll notice hexadecimal includes some letters. All right, so let's just go back. To move from base 10 decimal to base 2 binary, we divided by 2. We did successive division, remember? Um, so to go from base 2 to decimal, we did what was called weighted multiplication, right? We did 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 squared, that sort of thing, remember? Okay. So we'll do the same process no matter what the base number is. To move from base 10 to any base, we divide by the base, okay? The remainders are the numbers that will become our new number, right? And to move from whatever the base is to base 10, we do weighted multiplication, okay? N to the zero, N to the first, N second, all right? All right, so if we wanna go from decimal to octal, so we have 94 base 10, and we wanna go to base eight, octal. So we need to divide by eight, we'll get 94 divided by 8 goes in 11 times. We get a remainder of 6. Okay, if you do that on your calculator, by the way, you do 94 divided by 8, and if you don't have fractions, you get 11.75. All right, so if you don't want to do it all by hand, to figure out what the remainder is, take whatever the decimal is and multiply it by 8. So I had a de it was 11.75. So I do 0 0.75 times 8, that's the number I divided by, and I get 6. That'll tell me what the remainder is, okay? So then I take the 11 and I divide by 8. goes in one time, I get a remainder of 3. Am I done? Nope. I have to divide by 8 again. 8 goes into 1 no times, and I get a remainder of 1. Same process here. Remember, the most significant bit is the last remainder I got. So... 94 to base 10, base 10 becomes the number 136 in base 8. Notice that the number 136 looks bigger than 94, okay? If your base went down, your number should look bigger, all right? So if we convert the decimal number 189 to its octal equivalent, how do we do that? Again, we're going to divide by 8. So 189 divided by 8 becomes 23.625. To get the remainder, I do 0 0.625 times 8 and get 5. Now I do 23 divided by 8. So that's 23 minus 16, right? Um, so I'm going to get a remainder of 7. Now I do 2 divided by 8, get 0 with a remainder of 2, and so that number becomes 275, All right? So now let's go the other way. Convert the octal number 134 into its decimal equivalent. 
All right, so we take one, three, four, and line them up. Eight to the zero, eight to the one, eight squared. So this is one, eight, 64. All right, and then we take the number it is. So we have four times one will be four. Three times eight, 24. 1 times 64, 64, we add those all up, it's 92. All right, so that means 134 base 8 is the number 92. All right, so that's the summary of how we do octal to decimal and decimal to octal. All right.